chemistry time. Today we're talking about electron configuration. So these are, these are uh, I already have this pulled up, these are the shape of electron orbitals. So in the Bohr model we had drawn these as actual orbits, right? Like, um, let, me, let me draw a little picture of the Bohr model. So in the Bohr model we would have some, here's the nucleus, and then it's surrounded by orbits that are actually the shape of orbits. In, in real life, the closest approximation are these shapes. So you can see we have something called s orbitals, here are p orbitals, d orbitals, and there are also f orbitals, you should write this down. So the, the shapes of orbitals are s, p, wow this is a really fat marker, d, and f. s, p, d, and f. So s refers to these shapes, these are spheres, I don't think that's why it's abbreviated p, uh, or why it's abbreviated s, the p's are these. Um, this, this shape you should know is often called dumbbell shaped. The P orbitals are commonly called dumbbell shaped. And the D's are commonly called clover shaped. Um, and the F orbitals are more complicated, uh, but you can look up images of those on Google. They're, they're basically like double clovers. Anyway, so as we said, the Bohr model had these, uh, the orbitals looked like orbits, but in real life they are these shapes. Good on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for electron configuration, um, remembering those shapes, we use this little, what's called an Aufbau diagram, uh, and coupled with three principles to tell the electron configuration of any element. So, this is called, like I said, an Aufbau diagram, and basically each atom that goes on, how do the, what does the atomic number do as we go from one atom to the next? Like we start with hydrogen, it has atomic number one. If we then go into helium, the atomic number does what? It increases. It increases specifically how? It goes up by one. Good. So if hydrogen has one proton, helium has two. Lithium has three. Boron has, Four. I mean, sorry, beryllium has, Four. boron has, Five. good. So they go up by one. So if it's a neutral atom, how many electrons does hydrogen have? One. Yeah, good. Helium then has two. Keep saying it. Lithium has, Three. beryllium has, Four. boron has. So, okay, so the, not only the protons, but when the atomic number goes up by one, the electrons go up by one as well. So what we do, basically every new element adds one new electron. So if we were to fill in this chart for hydrogen, we would just put in one electron in the 1s box. Oh, I have this the wrong thing. I hope that thing goes away. Please go away thing. Nope. <laughs> Oh, that's still too big. But we put one electron, which I abbreviate with an arrow. This is supposed to be an arrow. It, an up arrow in the 1s box. Then helium would have, well, we'll move on and we'll figure out what helium is going to have next. So that's called the Aufbau principle. So you should write this down. The Aufbau principle that every electron occupies the lowest level orbital it possibly can. Aufbau principle. Every electron occupies the lowest level orbital it possibly can. Effectively, it means since hydrogen only has one electron, the electron doesn't just fit in randomly here on this chart. The electron specifically goes into the 1s orbital, which is the lowest. The next one is called the Pauli exclusion principle, and that states that the maximum of two electrons can occupy each orbital. And the electrons have to have opposite spins. The electrons have to have opposite spins. And we represent the spins of the electrons with an up and down arrow. So we say they either have top. OK, so the, we represent top spins with an upward arrow, for crying out loud, upward arrow, and bottom spins with a downward facing arrow. I always draw my arrows with just like half the little points so that they fit into the box better. So once again, they can, two electrons can be in each orbital, but only if they have opposite spins. Hoon's rule then, like I said, there are three rules. Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hoon's rule. And Hoon's rule states that the single electrons with the same spin must occupy each equal energy orbital before additional electrons with opposite spins can occupy the same energy level as the others. So that's, that's a little bit confusing, but basically it means when we have, you'll see pretty soon, when we have something like a 2p orbital, which we represent with three boxes, what this one basically means, Hoon's rule basically means that we put in three up arrows before we put in any down arrows. Three up arrows before we put in any. So then when it goes to four, we put in 
the down arrow. Five. So all together they can hold six. The 2p uh, energy level can hold six electrons. We put in the three up electrons before we put in any down electrons. And I know this doesn't really, since we haven't applied this yet, it, it's really kind of hard to make sense of this. But basically, alpha principle, we put the electrons in the lowest energy level. The Pauli exclusion principle says we put in up and down arrows. And Hoon's rule says we put in all up arrows before we put in any down arrows. Okay, and so what do we use this for at all? Well, we can represent each element, oh, erase. We can represent each element as an orbital diagram, and we have this. So these are what we'll actually be doing today. So each element has its own orbital diagram and its own electron configuration, okay? So the orbital diagrams are these boxes. Um, so hydrogens is just one electron, so it can only have one arrow. Is, but can you think of a rule for how many arrows there has to be for each of these elements? How many altogether arrows must we have for neon? Say it. Say it louder. I didn't say it. Oh, did you say it? Yeah, 10. Because neon is element number 10, right? It has atomic number 10, meaning it has 10 protons. But if it's neutral, it also has 10 electrons. And so if it has atomic number 10, since there are 10 electrons here, there must also be 10 arrows in the boxes altogether. So hydrogen has one electron, one arrow. Helium has two, two, right? Um, so this is, these are the 1s orbitals. When 1s is full, we go to 2s. This number here, the 1, represents uh, principal energy level. Principal energy level. The S represents, how am I going to do this? The S represents the shape, right? We talked about those four different shapes of orbitals. And then the two or one or whatever it is represents how many total electrons are in that energy level. Total electrons. So when we say that hydrogen is 1s1, it means there's one electron in the first principal energy level, and the shape that it has is an S shape. Well, when I say S shape, it's the shape of the S orbital, which is spherical, not like the letter S shape. Okay, I'm going to erase it real quick so we can see the other ones that are on this page. Um, so hydrogen is 1s1, hydrogen is 1s1, helium is 1s2. There are two electrons in there now, right? Then we go to the next highest one. That's the alpha principle. It fills in the lowest one it can. So the next lowest one is for lithium, 1s2, 2s1. You see that? Mm -hmm. And for beryllium, it's 1s2, 2s2. Then for boron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So we would write, if we were doing um, carbon, we would write 1s2, because it fills up these boxes, 2s2, because it fills up these boxes, and then since we've used 4 there, what would its p be? Well, it'd be 2p2. Do you see that? This is always true for carbon. It's always 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, as long as it's neutral. If it gains or loses an electron, obviously this changes. So we just go in and fill these up as we go. So using the periodic table is probably the easiest way to do these, in my opinion. Um, I need to get this out of the way. What a catastrophe. Hopefully tell what, why this periodic table is shaped this way, right? We call this block, and you should, um, you have a periodic table with you? Yeah. If you have your periodic table with you, and if you don't, when you next encounter your periodic table, draw this on there. We call this whole block here, block here. This whole block we call the S block. This whole block we call the P block. And wh wh what's going on here? Why would I call this the S block? Well, we just saw that lithium and beryllium, yeah, this is, this is the electron configuration when we write it out. All of these will end with S something. It'll end with something S something. So for instance, lithium was 1S2, 2S1, right? So it ended with an S. All of these ones will end with a P. All of these ones will end with a D. And all of these ones will end with an F. Okay? When it comes to um, valence electrons, 
we, uh, let's write this down, please. I'm just going to write it on the Bing image search. A valence electron, and we've used this word in the past, so you should know it, but a valence electron is what? Where do we find the valence electrons? Yeah, the outermost electrons. The valence electrons are the outermost electrons. They're in the, the whatest principal energy level. So if they're the outermost, they're the what principal energy level? Will the number be greater or smaller? Greater. So they're in the, we could say the greatest principal energy level. We could even say, let's say the highest principal energy level. Well, that's really annoying. Um, the outermost electrons, they're in the highest principal energy level. Right, they're in the highest, that P stands for principal, the highest principal energy level. So when we look at something like, let's write the electron configuration, let's just look at, for, for giggles, let's look at scandium. So we're looking at scandium here. Let's write the electron configuration. Well, one of the way we can do it is we can start from hydrogen. And using your alpha, that's going to be a nightmare. I said, look. Okay, so we're going to do scandium, like we said. The easiest way to do this, um, if we use a little alpha diagram, or let me make my pin a little bit smaller. So for each element we go by, we're going to put an arrow in the box, right? So hydrogen, helium, lithium. We could just count them, right? Scandium is number 21. So we put in three, four, five, six, seven. Put them in, remember, up, up, up. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, now look, 4s is lower than 3d, so 19, 20, 21. So now we can just kind of look at our little boxes. Let me make it white so I can draw it down here. And we can say that scandium, scandium is, we just write them out, 1s2, right? 1s, because that's what this is called. There's two electrons in it. 2s2, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 3s2, 4s2, 3d1, right? Yep. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Another way we can write this is something called noble gas notation. So in noble gas notation, we go to the most recent, the previous noble gas. So from scandium, we go back to argon, and we write argon. Argon, oh, sorry. Scandium is still, we write argon in brackets, so AR, and then instead of writing all the stuff, argon's electron configuration is all of, I need to keep switching colors, all of this. So everything up until 4s1, right? Because argon has 18, so it's these 18 arrows. So then we write argon in brackets, and then we write what's left over, 4s2, 3d1. So this is just a shorter, faster way to write it. So you go back to the most recent noble gas, and then you start from here. Do you see how we can use the periodic table to do it too? So we'd start from argon, and we go potassium, which it really helps if you have your uh, periods labeled. So this is period one. Okay, please be black. Period one, period two, period three, period four, period five. Because the little trick here is that the S's, it's not true for the other letters, but the S's are always in line with what period they are. So we could go argon, right? Scandium is argon, 4, S2, and then 3, oops, sorry, that's not 3. Well, whatever. Oh, good. 4, S2, 3, D, 1, again, right? The Ds are always 1 behind the Ss, and the Fs are always 2 behind the Ss. Do you have questions about how we would do this? So we can use either the alphabet diagram and fill it in, or we can use the periodic table. The periodic table is where you should be aiming for it. This is the, like, the pro way to do it. You can use this for a while, like training wheels, but you should eventually be able to write these out just on the periodic table. Do you have questions about this? If you have questions about it, put them in the comments. Um, what should we do? I think, oh wait, no, there's one last thing, almost, um, valence electrons. So valence electrons, we can calculate valence electrons from this by, let me just clear these annotations real quick. Um, we can calculate valence electrons from this by 
adding up all the ones that have the highest principal energy level. So let's do another one here real quick, and let's do uh, oxygen. Okay, well, it's still in white, but whatever. So oxygen is 1s2, which takes us to helium. Do you see how 1s2 has the electron configuration of helium? 1s2, 2s2, 2p what? So how many electrons are there in the p orbital? No, the 2p6 would be neon. So 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2p4. Right? So how many valence electrons does oxygen have? Well, what's oxygen's highest principal energy number here? Two. Two. Two is the highest. So both of these have two. So altogether, how many electrons are there in the two principal energy level? There are six, because there's two here, and there's also two here. So two plus four equals six. So oxygen has six valence electrons. Six valence electrons. So we add up all of them from the highest principal energy level. Since the highest here is 2, we add them both together. Okay? And so then we can do what's called a dot diagram, which is we just, it has six valence electrons, so we draw six dots around it. Draw one dot on each side, and then put more on the sides that need more. So it has. I remember that. Yeah, that's an electron dot diagram. How, what kind of electrons do we put in the electron dot diagram? All of them? Valence. Just the valence ones. Okay? Just the valence. Okay, there, there, is a, there is a worksheet assigned in the Google Classroom, um, and it, this should be fairly easy, but if you have questions, let me know. Goodbye. Oh, I always say goodbye, and then I'm not actually ready to be done.